Thank you, Verona, so much. Um, I'm almost terrified to read the poem after that uh, amazing um, summary of it. Um, this is Causeway. Crossing over, you panicked I'd drive us under. I doubted myself, the clock, the water. The sun was yellow and long. I'd got us lost already, looking for somewhere to stop. Now we waded, counting out loud by a tide table, facing moonish sand, warning signs, causeway spotted with seaweed, sea locks in miniature, mirroring epic skies. You gripped the passenger door handle, eyeing the shifting horizon. I can't say for certain we left the island holer. We put our feet in the earth, climbed a bank of long, stiff grass, photographed each other. For half an hour we breathed in light, then chased inland, though the road was dry, passing again the white wooden tower that looked to us like walls it stands to hold back life. Healing island, we do not know what it means. They say nobody knows what it means. I'm also going to read two more poems. Um, although it doesn't say anywhere in that poem, it, it was uh, written pretty much around the spring equinox, and obviously we're here today um, on the day after the, the solstice. So um, I'm going to read a poem called Solstitial, which was written for a project um, that Sarah Hymas and Rebecca Bilkow um, brought together a, a group of poets to all write a poem on an hour um, of the longest day a couple of years ago. So this is solstitial. We are drawn by a map of sweet ash winding through the twilit streets. There should be three fires, one of clean bones, one wood, one both. We have only split logs and white wax to offer, and a tithe of furred moth, and a swan's egg washed to the shore in a flood two days earlier. We pass the sloshing oval from palm to palm, cold as stone, full of things that will not happen. We float wreaths from the candlelit jetty to the dark, fretful heart of deepest water. Bunches of foxgloves and elderflower give ourselves to the lake to slake the calamitous storms of the future, muttering moonshine, mid-mid, most inclined, axial tilt. We drink, we burn the sickly half year, leap the flames, solemn, hallooing. Our voices spin round a dish of the veil, which is also a crater, which is also a ruin. We want to sing through the centre, but the night is too light here, cloud confusing the jagged horizon. We try to feel it. 2309, maximum camp, the exactness anachronistic. Mid, mid, most inclined, we chant like a hymn or something older. We will wash our faces with cold grey dew. We will sleep with flowers pressed under our pillows. We will run the streets naked at three in the morning, the sun almost dark and dry. And I'm going to read one more. Um, this is called Stay Apparatus, um, and it's uh, pretty self-explanatory. Stay Apparatus is the only thing that, that does that isn't explained actually in the poem, which is the a uh, system of musculature that allows a horse to sleep while standing. Out of the traveling window, there are always horses, dozens in a field by the track, blanketed against autumn mizzle, or flaring to a bright white blaze on the brow of a hill by a service station, midsummer, or nuzzling each other's warm necks in the snow where the limit switches from 40 to 50, or grazing the same green triangle month on month. The more you seek them, the more appear, as if called out from a hidden field by a word you were not aware you had spoken, could not repeat. I was never as awed as a girl as I am as a woman by horses. Their lateral vision, stay apparatus, knack for alertness, even in dreams. How they carry their history so lightly and seem not to blame us. A horse kept alone will not sleep well. A horse kept indoors will sicken. They are always there, out of every window, a threat, tempting to run.